Welcome to Podband Pipecast, the premier pipe band podcast. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hello and welcome, everyone. Uh, we are here today with Mr. Len Wood. Do you prefer Len or Leonard? Well, Len is fine. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Len Wood, that's how everyone knows you around here anyway. Yeah, so. if, you're, if you're angry with me, it's Leonard. I just <laughs> So depending, depending on, you know, the right. day. Right, totally. Well, uh, yeah, we're here with Mr. Lenwood, and he's going to tell us about his career and piping and being a pipe major. Everyone probably in this area knows who he is. And if you don't, you must have been living under a rock. Um, <laughs> and no spoilers, but he's going to talk a little bit about his career and you're going to um, he's he's done just so many things in the local community and continues to do things even though we said just before he we started this recording he's supposed to be retired but you know how that works <laughs> retired from one thing and on to about 15 more so um so we'll kind of let him introduce himself as he goes through our questions here about yeah. his life so let's get to it what's our first uh how did you get into piping well i am um... I guess like most young kids, I took piano lessons for first. Um, I went to a parochial school and um, a nun would lock me in a room at lunchtime and I practiced the piano. Uh, and then we got our own piano at the house. So I was no longer locked in the room and I stopped practicing piano. <laughs> so that didn't, that didn't last. I took violin for a couple of weeks and boy, I didn't want that at all. And so um, I remember watching a television program on a Saturday morning and um and um, there was a, a pipe band in this program called 77 Bengal Lancers. And I think there were probably all of maybe 10 episodes. I saw that. My dad was there. And I said, Dad, I, that's what I want to do. I want to play bagpipes. And he said, sure, Len, I'll, I'll do what I can. Well, when the next episode came up again after the 10, where the bagpipes were on once again, um, I said, hey, Dad, I, I thought I was going to get bagpipe lessons. Well, my grandmother was there and um, she said, I think I know someone. So she got her lessons with a little band called the Adirondack Pipe Band. I shouldn't say little. They were a pretty good pipe band back in the, the late 50s, early 60s. Um, I started lessons with a, with a guy to begin with. In the United States, the philosophy is most pipers are born in the pipe band, in the pipe band room because that's where we all start. We come into the bands, unlike parts of Scotland and Ireland where people become soloists first and then might migrate to a band. In this country, generally, we start in a pipe band and migrate. But anyway, um, this, there was a, a family by the name of Kirkpatrick. It was in the same town that I lived in. Four sons and their dad. All, all, sub, all four sons played pipes. They were good players. And, uh, and then the dad played drums and um, he would pick us up. He'd pick us up, my cousins and myself, and take us to the next town, Fort Edward, and we would get our lessons. And then after the lessons, we'd go over to the drugstore and have a Coke. And then by the time we'd watch the band a little bit, then he'd take us back and drop us off at our houses. And, um, but his youngest son, Tommy Kirkpatrick, is the one I took lessons from initially. Before it's finished, I took lessons from Tommy, Harold, John, and Robert, one after the other. And, um, and then he left to join the Air Force pipe band. He played with them for, for four years while he was in the Air Force. And after he left, the guy by the name of Jerry Cashin took over the instruction. And then he joined the Air Force and played in the Air Force pipe band. Air Force pipe band, U.S. Air Force pipe band at that time had all of seven players. You had to be a pretty good player to get in the band. Hmm. So um, anyway, um, after that, there was a guy by the name of Hugh McInnes. And Hugh was a pretty well-known player in Scotland. And he, an upholsterer, uh, opened a shop in, in Glens Falls, New York, and, um, and then started teaching. So we'd go to his house. Lessons were 50 cents. And uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> a lot of money back in the 50s. And so, um, and he would teach us. And he was a uh, pretty strict, pretty strict teacher. Didn't put up with any foolishness. And uh, you worked hard or you didn't, yeah, or you, you didn't stay. So I was with uh, the bunch of them for, for two years. 
And then when I was 14, the family moved to uh, Phoenix. And um, um, my cousin, who was also taking lessons with me, and I got him involved, um, his family moved to Reno in June, and we moved to Arizona in August to Phoenix. He immediately got in with the Sierra Highlanders, and I could not find a pipe band here at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and so finally, one day, um, there was a, an ad in the paper for Kaufman and Broad Homes. They were, they were building a, a housing development they called Windsor Arms or Windsor, Windsor Square or something like that. They had a pipe band playing to introduce people to the homes. Hmm. And it's the Phoenix Scottish Pipe Band. <clears throat> so I'm all of 14 years old and probably all of four foot tall. And I <laughs> went over to the pipe to, to the pipe major and I introduced myself. And I said, uh, I've been taking lessons in upstate New York and I would like to, uh, I, we moved here and I'd like to continue and join the band. <clears throat> and the, guy, the pipe major, Glenn Moore, turned to me and he said, well, you can come out to practices, but if there's any foolishness, you're out. <laughs> so welcome, right? So uh, I guess there was no foolishness because I stayed a long time. And Glenn <laughs> and I became pretty good friends. But um, that's how I got from there to here. And um, I played in a, a dozen bands over the years. I don't know if you want me to go down that list of bands or not. But, <laughs> but piping, is, piping is pretty wonderful. Um, you get to meet great people on the, uh, along the way. Um, you have friends anywhere in the world. It's just hard to believe the people that you run into in, in the most obscure places and um, they remember you or you remember them or um, you don't. But, um, uh, but I, I, I played here in, in the Phoenix Scottish Pipe Band until I joined the Navy. <laughs> um, and um, so that was 61 until 69. And um, while I was in the Navy, I played with the Cameron Highlanders hmm. for, um, oh, I guess about six months while I was in A school after boot camp. That's where I met Kathy, my wife. And um, um, just after that, got, took a ship in Charleston, South Carolina, played with a little band out of, out of, out of Charleston called the Midlothian Pipes and Drums. From there, uh, got out of the Navy, finished college, moved to Savannah for a job. And uh, Kathy and I started a band there called Savannah Celtic. We were with them for seven years. Then uh, moved, but I worked for Hershey Chocolate Company they, uh, in sales and they shipped me up to uh, Atlanta. So my first band in that area was with the, uh, a friend invited Kathy and I to play with Piedmont Highlanders out of Greenville, South Carolina. Played for them for a season. And then because we were living in Atlanta, we joined the Atlanta Pipe Band. Two years to the day, we got moved to the home office in Hershey, Pennsylvania. So I played with the pickup band there. I didn't even have a name. It was just Pipe Band. <laughs> <clears throat> and then uh, uh, less than two years, back to Atlanta and played with the band there, the Atlanta Pipe Band, for about another seven years. And then in 98, Kathy and I moved back here. And um, at that point, I played with, with Mesa Caledonian for a season. And um, Kathy, one day Kathy says to me, I am not giving up another Friday for band practice. <laughs> so, so I couldn't disagree. <laughs> and um, we, we then found the Phoenix Scottish Pipe Band and, and uh, started working with them and rebuilding, a lot of rebuilding, a lot of rebuilding. Um, there was a short period where we were taking a break from competitions. So I went down to Tucson with four of the kids in the band and we, we played with a group called um, Hugh O'Connor Memorial Pipe Band. They were them for a season. And, um, and now I continue to play with a band in um, Waterford, Ireland, the uh, De La Salle Scout Band. I've been playing with them since 2009. So uh, hmm. a lot of bands, a lot of pipe. <laughs> a lot of bands. Fun. Yeah, sounds like it. Yeah. A lot of the wide variety of experiences, you know, all across yeah. the country. Absolutely. And different levels of pipe band and but um but all just just marvelous. The people the people you meet are um they're the cream of the crop. I mean, there's just no none better. Mm -hmm. Seriously. So 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 we know, spoiler alert for anyone who doesn't know, 
<laughs> Len ended up as the pipe major of the Phoenix Pipe Band um, eventually. But what uh, before that happened, what was piping like for you in that earlier part of your, the career before you became a pipe major? It was glorious. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, it was um, it was it was good. I uh, you know I when I the years that I was in in upstate New York. Um, didn't play much. I'm doing, I wasn't playing pipes and strictly practice chanters. And, um, they were very strict on, on playing correctly. You know, that you had to play doublings and you had to play all the, all the movements correctly. And, um, and, and that, it was just a given. Well, I moved out here and the, the, the Phoenix Scottish pipe band, um, the guy that was elected pipe major right after I joined, uh, John Ford, not the movie star. <laughs> and um, he had played in vaudeville, and he believed that as long as two or three people or four people in the band played all the, the movements, then they would cover up for everybody else. Oh, wow. So the, yeah, I know. And the music that came out was without anything. It was just it was just clean of any kinds of movements. I, I'll never forget playing Scotland the Brave, just very round without the first uh, anything in it, you know, just notes. So... So consequently, I fell right into that too. And, um, and so somewhere along the line uh, with Jock Snedden, a fellow by the name of J.N. Jock Snedden moved down from Reno during the winters and he'd live in his van. And he just showed up at practice one evening. And um, I, ironically, it was the same time that Chris and Duncan and Jim, uh, Jim Grant came in. I think um, Bob McCann came in at the same time. And he started teaching and just took this back to the right way of playing. And um, so, uh, you know, Chris, your uncle, um, and I would take our lessons together from him. Uh, at that time, Chris would drive up to Deer Valley where I lived and um, we'd get in one car and drive out to the desert and he would be in his van and he would teach us in his van. Imagine, <laughs> uh, you, you know, you're, you're expecting your first child somebody coming to you and when she's 15 and says well um we're gonna i'm gonna teach her out in the desert so just have her get in the car and and drive out there you know the middle Impossible. of nowhere in a van <laughs> that's right exactly you know and but but in those days there was a lot more trust there i guess because your parents and my parents both said okay and we would do that and jock was on a madman he would yell at us and he'd raise his fist and <laughs> bit when he yelled and oh, it, was just, it was amazing and so you'd think you weren't doing anything right and then you'd find out from one of the other band players that your jocks are oh, they're going to be good players they're good boys you know so, but <laughs> like, not, oh, never okay. to you never to you <laughs> so 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 that that was it it was just it was good fun and we developed and um um it, it worked out very well yep yep and That's lasting fun. friendship chris and i have been friends for an awful long time, awful long time. Yeah, for anyone who um, didn't know, we also interviewed Chris, who is our pipe major for the Mesa Caledonian Pipe Band, and that was uh, a couple months ago. You can find it on our, our episodes if you want to listen to those. He also talks a lot about those early years and how it was a lot of fun, but kind of crazy, like you said. He did not mention any van practice. <laughs> I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> he did not mention the van. Yeah. He did mention your teacher, but um, yeah, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and um, you know it was um, it was good because he he definitely we didn't we, had, we didn't have the first concept of competition. We would go to the games and um, and uh, Chris and I both competed in solos, but not not for the band, and and then um, he Doc gave us. Uh, a march for Spain reel to play. It was a, a four part, two four march, and two a two part for Spain and a two part reel. <clears throat> That's all that was required for for grade C at that mm. time. And um, so we went over to the games in Santa Monica, and our first go, we came back with the uh, ye old monkey duck trophy. <laughs> so, yeah, well, cool. What a deal. Yeah, it was. It was cool. So. Well, that's fun. All right, now the exciting part. No, <laughs> that was exciting. <laughs> it was pretty exciting. Uh, so why and how did you end up becoming a pipe major? 
Well, Adele, it was, um, um, what happened was Chris was pipe major in the band. And I, I guess, <clears throat> I guess I must've been all of 18 or 19 at the time. And um, Chris is a year younger than me. So, so, um, but he was pipe major of the band. And then he, um, he stepped out to, to concentrate on his education. You know, he was going to law school. And uh, so when he left, I automatically became pipe major until the next election. And then, um, and then I was elected pipe major. Um, probably not because I was any better than anybody or anything. And, and truthfully, you don't have to be the best player in the band to be a good pipe major either. But, but um, it was probably because nobody else would step up for it or all the people that were voting were my students. That may have been <laughs> may have what, you, what happened. So, <clears throat> um, but I was pipe major in the band at that point. And, um, and for a couple of years before I joined the Navy and, and uh, left. Um, um, I know you're probably going to be asking about pipe major, but uh, frankly, it's not a fun job. It, it's not something that you sh anybody should ever wish for. Um, you might wish it on somebody <laughs> and someone you don't like, but, um, and I never, I don't, you know, I've been pipe major for, I guess, four or five bands. Never, I never campaigned for it. You know, I was always, that's, you ended up in it more than anything else. So that's the why, I guess you just be, the answer to why is because. <laughs> <laughs> because it did happen. <laughs> because it happened. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, yeah, but that's, uh, that's how it got started. And, um, um, and then when we, mo we moved back here, uh, we took the band back and, um, and even then it was only our goal, Kathy's and mine, was to um, have a place to practice at least once a week. You know, we, we knew that we would be forced to get the bagpipes out once a week at, uh, playing with, uh, with the Phoenix Scottish Pipe Band. Um, they were rough. They were very rough. <clears throat> we actually, um, I actually, I called over to the director of piping and at the games in Mesa, and I said, um, I introduced myself, and I said, we just moved here, we've taken the band back, we're, we're moving in the right direction, and we, we won't be able to compete for another year or two, but um, we'd like to bring the band out, at least play in the mass bands, and maybe if you need us for something else, do that. And, um, and the, the director of piping said, no. No. Oh. Oh. You can't bring your band out. And I said, well, wait a minute, I've been playing in pipe bands for... 20 years or more and nobody's ever said I you couldn't bring your band on the field. So I've heard your band. It's terrible. We're not going to let you on the field. <laughs> wow. You're, not, you're an embarrassment. It's like, okay, well, so. <laughs> Got your so, work cut out for you. <laughs> we, we most definitely did. But, but, but fortunately that was, um, that had to be around November, December. And then in January, the, the Caledonian society needed someone to play for their, their um, Robert Burns mm -hmm. dinner. So, so they called Kathy and I and John Lang. I don't know if you remember John Lang. John mm -hmm. was here for a while and John was playing with us. And um, so I said, yeah, we'll come out. So, and they said, well, well, we'll feed you. That's all we can do. That's, that's fine. We'll, we'll be glad to play. <laughs> so we got there and, and um, after we played, um, I'm not mentioning the guy's name. He came out and he said, oh, I didn't know you guys could play like that. Sure, bring your band out and march. <laughs> Oh, that's what happened. That's funny. But we See, worked. We worked hard to build it. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I was very lucky to have someone like Kathy to be there with me because she supported me through the whole thing. And so it was not it's not Len Wood doing anything. It was Len and Kathy. And mm -hmm. you probably heard that. You know, um, Len yeah. and Kathy or Kathy and Len would would do the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Very very fortunate. She was a she was brilliant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so what were some, because I, I don't, I'm sure there's people listening to this that are like, that sounds like an insurmountable challenge <laughs> to, you know, what were some challenges that uh, came with being pipe major of the band at that well, time? And, and how did you overcome those challenges? Well, we, um, we've always had 
and still have an open door policy in the van. Um, if you have an interest in playing in the bike band, we'll put you in the band. We may ask you to leave. But, but at least, <laughs> unfortunately, we, I don't think we've ever done that. Um, no, I can't think of a certain anyone who was asked to leave um, or forced to leave. Uh, you know, we just, just so um, we had an open door policy and a number of players came and just over the first few years came out and said, um, because of whatever, we'd, we'd like to play with you. Uh, is that is that OK? And it's like, yeah, absolutely. Come on in and play. And over um, over, I say, three years, we went from seven players to almost 20. Hmm. And, um, and, and because some of these people brought students with them. So, you know, so we were able to grow quickly and, um, um, and, and we also grew in, in quality as well. You know, the, the things developed well. So, um, yeah, it was, but so challenges, that was the, that was the big challenge to get, to get everybody on, on board. Um, Kathy and I have always taught, we, you know, the bands, back east that we were with, we taught in those bands. The one in Savannah, for instance, we, there wasn't, there wasn't one person in the city that played bagpipes until we started teaching. So, so that helps. And if you, you know what you're doing, or at least you think you know what you're doing <laughs> enough, you can show somebody, you know. And so that, so the band developed that way. Um, that was the challenge. And I, I like to think we, we came up to it, so hopefully. Yeah. 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 So. Did did you ever have anyone um, who had been in the band and then you showed up and said, well, we're going to get better now. Did you ever have anyone who just didn't want to go along with that and just said, well, I've been doing this for however long and I'm just going to keep doing it the way I do it, you know? Well, no. And, and, um, and the reason, the reason is, is when you're, when you're running a band of any sort, I, at least to my way of thinking, it's, and maybe, maybe more so at the grade four level and even grade three level, you have a lot of responsibilities to, to work. And you, unless you have um, some benefactor that covers all your expenses, and they're pretty heavy these days. You know, when the Phoenix Scottish Pipe Band was formed in 1958, they all bought their own uniforms. And by 1960, the Pepsi-Cola bottler here in town bought their uniforms and drums for them. Mm. And can you imagine what they paid for all the uniforms for the band and all the drums? Three thousand dollars. Wow! Can you imagine? <laughs> that's nothing. I, I nothing. <laughs> that's just nuts to think about that. But but that doesn't happen today. So you you need a band that that's, that will do more than just compete. You have players that aren't going to make the grade, but they definitely can play parades and they can play well enough for shows. You do your best to see that everyone plays well and at least well enough and not at the competition level. So, so those people are important to you too, and they and they have a right to to play and enjoy the the, the instrument and the and the, and the, and, um, and the band. And then and then when it comes time to compete, those people that that don't play the way you want them to be playing don't compete with you. And I've had a, a couple of people get really angry with me because I said you're not ready today. You know, maybe next week. I knew better. I would say, no, you're, this isn't your day. And um, they stomp off, but they still come back. They still came back to play with the band. So, yeah. So, no, I've never really had anyone say, no, I'm not going to do that. I, no. Okay. Maybe, I'm just, yeah. maybe I've just been lucky. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you just have a way of convincing them that not today, but yeah. next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so, oh sorry. Uh, what did you like most about being pipe major? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's to like about? It? I mean, you. Um, well, I, I guess the the best part of being pipe major is that you get to make the final decision on the music. You get to you know. Um, I I like to think that. Well, I, in fact, what I would do. When I was pipe majors, I would bring music out, and not always at the same time. And I, you know, I for band practice, and I'd say, "Here's a few tunes to think about. Let me know what you think. Uh, these might end up in the medley, or this might end up in the MSR." <clears throat> and and I would 
I would get together with the, the lead stroke and say, hey, I'm thinking of these tunes. Do you have anything you like that you want to add? And so, so I always try to make it inclusive. Pretty important. Because if you just come out with the music and you decide this is what you're going to play and they don't like it, then it's your fault. You came out with music and you offer them opportunities to even bring something to you. You know, have you heard a tune you like? Oh, I know a great one. I can't play that. We're not going to be able to play that, you know, but, but let's play something that's similar. You know, it's a different, we're going to play it. What do you think about this one? And, and you swap music back and forth. And then when everybody agrees, that's what we're going to play. You got it made. You don't have to worry about, the, you know, if the worst comes to worst, you selected this. You helped us with this, right? You were part of the presentation that selected the music. So that's, um, that's probably the best part of being pipe major. Pipe major is a lot of work. If anyone thinks they can just walk up to the to the line and say, "By the right quick march," and they're going, and that's being a pipe major, it's not. When I retired three and a half to four years ago, it was a big relief. And I, did, I did what I thought was the best I could do, and I needed somebody to take the band farther. And, and uh, it was it was a, a very easy and comfortable move for me to make. I had I I didn't lose any sleep over that one. Yeah. So. Not to say that I never had fun. I've always had fun. But, um, but it's, so Adele, if you're thinking about going out for a pipe major, don't do it. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, so, and you had mentioned, because I, I know some of our listeners are familiar with sort of our local scene, and some are not. Some are, we have listeners from all across the North America and in the UK, and who even knows where, but... <laughs> um, so Len mentioned that when he became pipe major and started to really turn the Phoenix Scottish pipe band around, that there was maybe seven members and they grew very quickly. And now today they have both a grade three and a grade five band. And I know COVID times are weird. No one's competing right now, but a huge organization. You think you have like maybe 40 or more people? Probably. Yeah, it could be. It could be. If, um, if they stand still long enough, we might be able to count them. <laughs> Yeah, so just think about that. As much as as much as he says it's it's hard work, and it is. It's that hard work seems to have paid off. So great organization. Thank you, thank you. I, I like to think it is too. It's been um, it's um, it, you know you work hard, and when, and seriously, we did. Um, we did work hard, and um, and the new people are um, Jeff and Rod and and. Um, um, we have we have a little cooperative thing with Tucson right now, so and they're they're helping with our drum section. And so um, it's um, it it isn't something you just take lightly. That's you know, and you know that because you both work hard in the band, and, and I, I watched you develop. And you you were such a great help to us when we started our our, our midsection. You came out and taught. And, uh, we'll never we'll never forget you for that, or forgive you. <laughs> that yeah you know that was it's funny those were some of my first students were the kids that i taught for your band and yeah and it was fun it was like all right i guess i'm teaching now and and i was pretty young then too i was like maybe 16 <laughs> like, yeah. we got you, a, you know a couple 10 year old kids here and <laughs> yeah yeah that's right it's really neat and it's uh um as you as you go through more and more of this you'll you, you will have more of those people and and you'll you'll develop really really close relationships with them, and that's that's really cool. It really yeah. is cool that to be able to sit back and say, "Well, you know, so." Yeah, building this local community right here in the middle of the desert, where <laughs> where yeah. there, there should yeah. not probably be a pipe band here, but there's several now. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. There are several, and and you know, even the fire departments, they're um, they're. They're coming out with bands. The um, the Scottsdale Fire Department should be ready to compete in Grade Five at the next contest. Nice, so, uh, that's, that's coming along nicely, and um, yeah, it's really really neat. So yeah, and and once again, I'm to the people listening at home. I don't want to self promote too much, but we also did an episode, a couple episodes actually, with um, Arizona Fire Service pipe band members, and Ooh. they're talking about their sort of movement to improve quality of their playing overall and workshops that they've done and 
It's a really cool one. A couple episodes you should check out. I mean, you should check out all of them, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> but um, speaking of that, so you retired how pretty recently, only a few years ago. Everything feels re- all the years run together. Time isn't but- real. <laughs> Time isn't yeah. real anymore. Yeah, I actually um, just a, just last year, I the last contest I played in was with Costa Mesa, and um, yeah, I, I I told the pipe major I'm seventy. At that point, I was seventy two and seventy three. And uh, I said, I don't want to die on the field. I could see the score sheet. One man, you know, one piper didn't finish. You know? <laughs> you know? And then and then somebody would kick me on the way out. So, um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, yeah, I retired. But, and, but um, you're not out of it because you can no. never leave this. It's like the mafia. You can never leave. <laughs> so yeah. uh, what are some things that you're doing now? I know you're still very active in the community. Yeah, I well besides teaching fire departments and um, and that kind of thing, but as far as the band is concerned, um, I decided to take over the quartermaster's job. Um, I make kilts, so hmm. and I repair stuff, and I make jackets and that kind of thing. So um, so it seemed natural for me to just take that. And I have I have this quirk. Um, it's like I don't want things to be out of place. Hmm. So everything everything's in one closet. They're all. Everything's labeled. I have a, a tablet that that if you want you you come to the band and your the length of your kilt is 23 inches and your waist is 30 and your your hips are are 33. Um, oh yeah, I got that kilt. It's um, one of our old ones, but it's in good shape and it says so right there. The condition, you know, and um, so I um, I have everything under control so far, and um, and it's good. I enjoy doing that. I enjoy airing things and um so that's that's been good and then teaching the grade five group um and it seems like uh when jeff needs something i end up making the phone call so <laughs> I, I enjoy doing that too so mm-hmm. i'm still very actively involved and um but i get to play the kind of music i want to play now <laughs> I do. I, you know, I, I, I dug up old marches for spades and reels, and I'm just having a good time playing them. So rather than playing what they want to play. Yeah. Playing because you want to. Yeah. yeah <laughs> playing what exactly. you want to. Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. Yep. So, and I don't have to dress up funny. <laughs> no. And stand in the sun for forever and, oh. <laughs> well, I, I'm, you know, I'll still play gigs with them and things like that. I'm glad to do that. And, yeah. Um, of course, I am, and I am learning the March Span reel, and of course, comes the worst and needs me, I'll be able to play that. But I'm not playing any more medleys. No. Just the fun stuff. Yep. <laughs> stuff I love to do. So, anyway. Good. Cool. And, um, and then that band that I play with in Ireland is just, just a hoot. I mean, they're great people, and um, I get over there, uh, they... Um, they give me a house to live in. They fill it up with food, and then, then they invite me out to dinner every night. I yell at me because I don't eat the food. You know, <laughs> and, uh, it's it's just 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 marvelous. And I've gone to the Lorient with them three times now. Uh, played the, the All Ireland with the band two years ago. Um, it's very fun. Good, yeah. To have bagpipe will travel. <laughs> so. Um... We have some more questions for Len and we're going to bring him back on next episode because when you've done this many things, you can't just have one episode. (laughs) (laughs) So tune in next week and we're going to be discussing some of Len's teaching experience and his long career teaching and advice that he might have for people who might want to learn pipes, um, lessons he's learned teaching pipes for very many years and all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. We will see you all next week. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening, everyone. If you enjoyed this show, then support us on Patreon for exclusive content, as well as the video of us recording this. We'll have special exercises we'll be writing, as well as tips and tricks with tenor drumming and other instruments to come. Um, Subscribe to us on YouTube for some tenor tutorials and possibly other tutorials later on. Um, and like us on Facebook at Podman Pipecast.